Hi, it's Lynn Liaz. On the screen, you can see an article which I posted just the other day on Before It's News. It's titled, Bone Chilling Apocalyptic Photos and Information That Will Blow Your Mind. New York City, Den of Satan, the Mysterious Babylonian Whore of Revelation, Breathtaking, Undeniable Chilling Photos and Videos. Now, I'm just going to brush over this and I'm going to leave the link here below the video. I will leave it in the comment section as well as in the information section about the video here on my YouTube channel. I advise you to go take a look at it, share it. I'm sure many of you within the sound of my voice have always thought that Rome and the papacy is the mysterious Babylonian mother of all harlots spoken of in the book of Revelation. I used to think the same thing until recent events began unfolding just over the past few years. And after much research of the scriptures and research, you know, period in general on the subject. Now, if you don't agree with this, that's fine. This does not make or break our salvation, but it certainly does help as we're watching things unfold prophetically to know exactly what's going on. Now, there's many reasons I feel that New York City is this mysterious mother of a harlots, and I'm going to explain that here um, in the beginning of this article, then I'm just going to you know, go through and brush over some of the highlights here within my article. So first I had written, God is up front. Evil is extraordinarily deceptive, sneaky, and oftentimes masquerades as good. When our enemy, Satan, is full of himself, he overplays his cards. The thing of it is, people do not want to believe the truth. They would prefer to call what is evil good and what is good evil. Why do the people of this day want to be deceived? And we're seeing more and more of that where people just want to remain asleep. No matter what you say or what you show to them, they don't want to believe. They want to um, ignore everything that's going on. Another thing that I see, people are so conditioned to what they have been told that they are unwilling to look into God's word themselves and see exactly what the truth of the matter is. Um, they'll even go so far as to lie and say, well, no, I didn't just hear it from this person. I also read the whole Bible and studied this myself just to back up what they believe. Okay, the Bereans were a people in the Bible, in the New Testament, that researched everything before they believed it. They were skeptics. So they would dig in and make sure that what they were being told was the truth. And that's what we should be doing. We should be searching the scriptures, not just taking this person or that person's word for it. And just to add to that, there are a lot of ministers this day that are very popular that are deceiving people. Okay, they're going to be in big trouble. So let's not take other people's words for it. Let's look at the scriptures ourselves. Okay, this very thing was predicted within the pages of the Holy Bible. Okay, next. Those who follow prophecy have always shared the same argument that exists today. Just who or what is the great Babylonian end times mother of harlots? Now, there are certain things, prophetically speaking, that are set in stone that we know positively. And there are some things that we can only make our best estimated guess based on um, what various scriptures say, what they seem to say, and so forth. Okay, one of those things is this right here. Okay, let's look, take a look at the scripture. It is Revelation 17, 5 through 6. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken, with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now, within this post, whether you believe that it's Rome or it's New York City or it's America, whatever your belief is, there are some very interesting things in this video I'm going to share with you and in the post that I did the other day. And I highly advise you to look at it. 
It says, this particular Babylon was obviously a mystery to John the Revelator at the time he was given this vision. This is a fact that cannot be denied. However, many people feel that mystery Babylon, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, is Rome. As I previously stated here in this video, I used to think so as well. However, over the past few years, after much research, I would have to agree that this particular Babylon that was such a mystery to John the Revelator is New York City in the United States of America. There are many reasons why, why excuse me, I feel this way. However, do note that Rome in itself was no mystery at the time John had this vision. Please study the photos and the commentary beneath the photos below and decide for yourself. Be aware that New York City was named after King James, and this is just an interesting side note, by the way, who was the Duke of York and then later became King. King James was also a 33-degree Freemason who is responsible for the biblical King James translation as used above in the verse that I quoted. Be aware that New York City is the financial center of the USA, which interacts with the entire world. It is the center for trade, commerce, business, etc., just as Babylon was considered in her day. New York City is also a great center of evil, and let us not forget that the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, New York City is our root of evil here in the USA. And let's not forget that the uh, world... Trade Center okay, is in New York City. That is the, uh, how do I put it? The money, the economy, the finances. It has a lot to do with the whole world. The USA today has whored herself out to Satan. Even many of the most well-known evangelists and ministers of this day have sold their souls to the enemy. Now, what I say next, I'm saying as a nation, not necessarily each individual person within the sound of my voice has said this or feels this way, but as a nation, as a whole, we have bowed before Satan himself and said, O Lucifer, father of lies, son of darkness, we want you to be our master, for we follow your desires, your will, and saturate ourselves with everything you have to offer. We no longer worship the God of our ancestors or Jesus Christ. We consider all that is good bad, and we consider all that is bad good. We are ready to be destroyed and to spend our eternity in the lake of fire. We have given ourselves to you, our master, and we refuse to repent. We are an evil people who loves darkness and not the light. So now with that being said, we're going to take a look at some of these photos. Now, it gets more interesting as we go. I had to start off with the least interesting ones first to kind of give you an idea so that you understand the more interesting ones later on. All right. Now, on this cathedral in New York City is some very strange images which depict the destruction of of New York City and some of its very important um, buildings. Okay, this is just one of the pictures. It is called the Mas Masonic World, um, the Cathedral of St. John the Divine, Morningside Heights, New York City. You can see one of the pictures here. It says this building has been claimed as being the world's greatest cathedral. Realistically, they can maintain such high hopes because its sources of funding included tycoon elitist who share the Nephilim Luciferian blood, such as J.P. Morgan and prominent figures like the Grand Master of the Masons of the State of New York. In March of 1925, the Freemasons were so proud of their accomplishment in completing this cathedral that it was featured on the front page of a publication titled Masonic World, and that was a March 25, 1925 issue. On the western side of the cathedral, stone masons sculpted countless scenes, again, this is just one of them, that are very out of place for a cathedral. The most striking image is the bone-chilling depiction of the destruction of New York City and its landmarks. So going down, we can see some very strange things. Like you see here, this is the Statue of Liberty. 
and it says that the distance from the Statue of Liberty's torch to the tridents inside the 9-11 Memorial Museum Pavilion is 12,000 feet exactly, which is an astoundingly round number. Here you can see Lucifer the Light Bearer. This is the New York City Rockefeller Center. So they've got a picture of Lucifer the Light Bearer there, which happens to also be outside of an ice arena. Um, very strange. I'll show you that here shortly. Okay, here's something in just interesting. See this Egyptian picture, okay? It says one of the most important parts of an ancient Egyptian ritual was titled Stretching the Cord because it was associated with the goddess Seshet. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, okay? It's spelled S-E-S-H-E-T, Mistress of the House of Architects. The cord in question is the mason's line that was used to measure the dimensions of the building and then align the building with the stars and or points of the compass. Okay, now you see here a picture of Statue of Liberty. Now the definition of the word Sashetta means hidden things, mysteries, secrets. So this clearly implies that Pharaoh is being given dominance of those mysteries through the goddess Sashet. Her symbol, the, papyr the papyrus plant, symbolizes a seven-pointed star. Pharaoh Tuthmosis III called her She of Seven Points. Now, this isn't the only thing, but one thing that's noteworthy. Notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the Statue of Liberty, known um, as Isis and also Lucifer the Light Bearer, was built and erected by the Freemasons. Okay, so we have a Luciferian false god symbol, the symbol of Satan, facing all the buildings right there on the coastline of New York City. Let's go take a look at the picture real quick. Okay, you can see right here with the torch up in the air. And um, of course, there's the old Twin Towers facing New York City, shining the light of Lucifer on our on one of our major cities in the United States of America that also is the center of the world trade and finances and money and many other important things. Okay, here is a, another cathedral and you can see the Luciferian symbolism here. Now, um, here's something called Cleopatra's Needle. Now, the Freemasons had funded this, the expedition that transferred this obelisk from Egypt to New York City. Um, it's obviously a phallic symbol the exact distance from Cleopatra's needle to the Alma Mater sculpture at Columbia University is exactly 3,141 meters. Now, pi also happens to be 3.141. Okay, the Illuminati, Freemason, Luciferian, Nephilim bloodline, they have a lot of symbolism, numbers, shapes, and all sorts of things that they use. Those are their secrets, and they are the keepers of secrets, the mysteries, okay? They are very evil. Now, you might notice I keep saying the Nephilim bloodline. Don't think for a second um, that Lucifer, Satan, doesn't have his pure evil bloodline. And I've said this before in other videos. Jesus Christ has a pure bloodline. Well, Satan the master of deception, the manipulator, the copycat, he has his too. He's making his pure evil bloodline for the coming Antichrist, who I wholeheartedly believe that person already exists today and is getting ready to step out in the public eye. And many people are going to know who he was, who he is. And many people are going to be fooled. Okay, now let's move on. If that wasn't enough for you, the distance from Cleopatra's Needle to three World Financial Center is exactly 333,000 inches. Now notice how the cord is oriented in line with the orientation of three um, World Financial Center, almost as if the building was intentionally designed to point at Cleopatra's Needle. Three World Financial Center is the same building which contains the exquisite 11 tiers 9-11 memorial. Okay, now aerial shot here. Okay, notice that this looks very similar to Orion's belt. 
Okay, and this is ground zero. Now look here. See Orion's belt? Orion's belt lines up with the pyramids, the Giza pyramids. This was intentionally done back when the Giza pyramids were constructed. Okay, Egypt was a huge, huge Nephilim um, place at the time. You know, the, a lot of your pharaohs and so forth were in the Nephilim bloodline. All right, so that's an interesting note there. Now I'm going to show you an aerial shot here of the Giza pyramids. See the three pyramids there. And then if you go up to here, see how they all line up. Okay, now I'm sure most of you must know this about our dollar bill and all the occult Luciferian symbolism on that. Um, the Latin, the symbols, the all-seeing eye, everything. Okay, now I've got it mapped out here in a picture for you. Okay, 13 layers of brick, 13 original uh, colonies, 72 bricks, 72 powers of the name of God and Kabbalah. Now, 13 is a very important Freemason, Luciferian, Illuminati number. Okay, and then the date that's on here, M-D-C-C-L-X-X-V-I or 1776, um, that is the date the Illuminati formed. Okay, and it also equals 666 right here. Okay, um, Anuit Coeptus, announcing conception. That's at, above the all-seeing eye, the Latin words. Then the Latin words below the pyramid, okay, Novus Ordo Seclorum, secular new order. Okay, so announcing the conception of the new order world order. Okay, the Illuminati eye or the great all-seeing eye, the great architect Lucifer. Now let's move on over here to the other side. 13 letters in motto, E pluribus unum, one of many. 13 illuminated stars, 13 enlightened colonies. Okay, going down below, 13 arrows, 13 leaves, 13 berries, different powers possessed by the 13 colonies. Okay, nine tail feathers, nine spheres risen through the return to heavenly state. And then finally, um, phoenix. This is a phoenix, not an eagle, rising from the ashes of, or rising from the ashes or rising from the ignorant world. Now, one more little thing to highlight in case you don't know about this. Okay, there is an owl hidden in the upper right-hand corner of the $1 bill, and you can see a close-up right there. It says, and let me tell you a little bit about the owl. Okay, as I just said, there is a small owl just to the left of the one, which appears on the upper right-hand corner of the dollar bill. But what does the owl symbolize? The owl is a symbol of wisdom. Owls can see in the dark. They can see what we can't see. Likewise, members of the Illuminati are privileged to information that is hidden from the general public. The owl is a nocturnal bird of prey with strong talons. The owl has been associated with wisdom, books, occult, no occult knowledge, shamanism, and other spiritual matters. As mentioned, the owl is a bird of the night. So an association with the moon is also suggested. They have short tail feathers and are silent in flight, stealth-like. They seem curious about things, but are happy to sit and wait until the time is right to obtain their goals or catch or conquer their prey. The demon goddess Lilth is represented throughout history as an owl. A study of the demon goddess of Lilth will reveal the dark secrets behind the owl of the Bohemian Grove. Okay, now you can see how this shapes out to Orion here. Um, the Great Pyramid is a type of ground zero and has since being the tallest structure in the world for more than 4,000 years, the marker of the original prime meridian and one of the last surviving ancient wonders of the world. Just as an interesting side note. These things are very important. And for those of you who don't know, our government is ruled by Freemasons. Even Ronald Reagan was a 33 degree Freemason. So Freemasons, once again, are the Illuminated, the Illuminati bloodline, the Nephilim bloodline. Um, they are the 
sons of Satan. They are uh, they existed after the fallen angels had sexual relations with the women, the earthly women. They created the uh, Nephilim, okay, or the giants. And then the giants were doing all sorts of crazy things. They were eating human beings. They were eating people's babies. You know about child worship, okay, and Baal and all that and, and infant sacrifice and all sorts of nasty, evil things, drinking blood, just doing all sorts of satanic, evil, wicked things. That is the Nephilim bloodline, which the Antichrist is going to come through. Let's look at the next page here. And again, we're just going to brush over some things. You could go look at the whole article yourself. Interestingly enough, the Millennium Hilton, which is intentionally misspelled. Okay, um, let me see where to start. Here we go. The Orion Nebula generates stars above and also represents the male generative system below. Um, on the scale of New York, the connection is to a line of buildings, including the Millennium Hilton, 195 Broadway, and the Fulton Street Transit Center. The Millennium Hilton happens to have 55 floors and is located at 55 Church Street. I don't believe the owners of the Millennium Hilton just happened to accidentally misspell the name Millennium on their hotel, which occupies some of the most prime real estate of Manhattan. Millennium means something significant in Latin. And you can see there, once again, it is misspelled. It means a thousand dominion. Now, biblically speaking, it signifies a thousand year dominion or reign, for example, such as Christ reigning for a thousand years before the last judgment. You know, when uh, Satan is falling in the bottomless pit for a thousand years, then he is released. He rises up against God with um, demons and evil, wicked people. And then, of course, he is destroyed once and for all and thrown into the lake of fire along with all of his followers and demons. Okay, Christ training for a thousand years before the last judgment and Adolf Hitler had a vision of a third Reich which would last for 1,000 years. Okay, now they use the number fives and the occult five is the number of life, the generative power. And you can see there the five points. Okay, let's skip on past this because you can go look at that yourself. Let me see what else we've got here. Um, right here is talking about the Statue of Liberty, which actually depicts the ancient Egyptian goddess Isis, which I just shared with you previously, and about how it is also the Lucifer the Light Bearer. That's talking about their um, Osiris and Horus, the Dog Star and so forth. Okay, Washington Monument is an Egyptian obelisk representing the male principle, which we looked at the other one, okay, um, the needle, okay. So um, it is directly connected with the dome of the Capitol, seeing right here and here, representing the female principle. Together they produce Horus, which is an unseen energy represented by Sirius. Now, all these things are occult. They're evil. They are wicked. This whole um, phallic symbols and female this and that, all crazy stuff. Very evil, okay? But I have to explain it to you. I'm not into these things. I certainly um, don't partake in that, nor should you or anyone. But I'm telling you about it in case you do not know. Okay, once again, the Statue of Liberty, okay, it says the statue entitled Civic Fame at the top of one center was constructed the same way as the Statue of Liberty and sheets with a hollow core. Any goddess standing on the moon harmonizes with Isis. Okay, now here's another image that is almost identical to the Statue of Liberty, okay? Um, now, the model who posed for this above sculpture, sculpture of civic fame was a fascinating and tragic figure named Aud Audrey Munson. 
Audrey Munson, 1891 to 1996, was an American model and actress known variously as Miss Manhattan, the Exposition Girl, and American Venus. She was the model or inspiration for more than 15 statues in New York City. You can take a look at it once again. Munson was the first woman, now this is a quote by author Scott Onstott, who is the author of the page I received much of this information from. Munson was the first woman to appear fully nude on film. She posed for three quarters of all the sculptures for the Panama Pacific International Exposition in San Francisco. I used to love to go on walks at the magnificent Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco, the last remaining architectural remnant of the PPIE. I never knew the weeping women or woman atop the dome and colonnade were based on Audrey Munson until now. Okay, below right here we have a statue of her. Um, this is from Star Maiden and Munson lived for 65 years in a psychiatric facility before dying at the age of 104. She was a falling star and woman who wept much. Okay, you can see um, her statue there. Now right here, interesting video, World Trade Center. This is something that you would need to know because it's just that interesting. Okay, this is a memorial service that took place one year exactly after um, everything that happened at Ground Zero on September 11th, 2001. You can see that they're formed in the shape of an eye. Now, unfortunately, I cannot play this video for you, but you can go to my post and look at it. Um, because there are copyright strikes for playing other people's videos within your video, especially if it's monetized. But you can see well enough in the picture of the formation, formation of an eye right there on ground zero. And it's formed by the marching people who were arranged in such a way to form an ellipse surrounding a ring, which represents ground zero. Um, it's the eye of Horus. Okay, now below, directly below this, so directly below ground zero is the Chamber Street WTC subway station that was flooded in 9-11 but not destroyed. Okay, the 1998 installation entitled Oculus was created in this station by the artist Kristen Jones and Andrew Genzel. It features a series of mosaics of single eyes on the walls. Very strange and chilling. Okay, so directly above and below ground zero is the all-seeing eye. Now, if you listen to Jonathan Kahn or if you've read his book about the Harbingers, 9-11 was an extremely important event in the world and spiritually. Okay, because if you've read that book, then you know that we defied God after it was destroyed and said, we will rebuild. We will make it bigger and better. And we did. And God's not a fan of that. Okay. There's more to it than what I just said. You would have to read the book, but um, you don't shake your fist in the face of God. God will knock you right down. So this is not a good thing. Now, also below ground zero is this huge, enormous mosaic that adorns the floor. Now, let me show you what it looks like if you were to look down at it. It is the world with, of course, the all-seeing eye. Hey, that is very occultic. Um, it says the word Oculus, and that's what this is called in English, means a round or eye-like opening or design, and is reminiscent of the Oculus atop the Roman pantheon. The sound OC in the word Oculus is shared by the word occult, which interestingly enough means hidden. Okay, now here's a quote. It says, the cult of OC, the ancient ciphers for the sun, a circle, and the moon, a crescent when joined form the word OC. To occult means to eclipse, as when the moon obscures the sun during a total eclipse. OC is also the root of the Latin word for eye, oculus. So the occult is the cult of the celestial sun, moon, eye, whose wink darkens the day. All right, now there's more to this than that. Look here, the Grand Army Plaza in Brooklyn. Okay, this is more about an all-seeing eye. You can see some aerial shots. There's another one. You can see right there. Okay, this has to do with the all-seeing eye. All right, this has to do here with the Sailor's Memorial Arch. 
Um, the Roman style triumphal arch is very similar to the arch of Septimus Severus in Rome, right? The below image reveals that the Grand Army Plaza is an ellipse with 12 radiating spokes. See there? And then here, that is the Brooklyn Public Library Central Building. The building in the southeast corner of Grand Army Plaza is the Brooklyn Public Library Central Building. Okay, they're showing you here what it is in the photos. Okay, there's another picture. And there's another picture. Now, an interesting inscription is found on the right side of the building, which states, Here are enshrined the longing of great hearts and noble things that tower above the tide. The magic word that winged wonder starts, the garned, garnered wisdom that never dies. Isn't it interesting that it says, What a spell we are under, when the floor area of the Brooklyn Public Library's central building is 33,000 square meters. Again, 33 is a very important Illuminati Luciferian occult number. How clever of them to hide that significant number in square meters when the imperial system of feet is used in the U.S. Here is a detail of the front entry. See right there. Look at all that. It looks very Egyptian. It says above the gate figures portray beloved characters from American literature. The tops of the columns have a sun on the left and a moon on the right. You can see right there. The columns depict science on the north and art on the south. This north and south divide parallels the twin towers of the World Trade Center. The columns of Boaz and Jachin and Solomon's Temple depicted in every Masonic lodge in the world. And it is the most occulted symbol, the left and right hemispheres of the brain. Now let's go on to the next page here. All right, it shows you the what they call the third eye okay see the center of the brain the image there right they believe that you can do all these spiritual things with that um, third eye in the center of the brain or the eye of horus now it is actually called the pineal gland okay nobody really knows what that gland does right but the um, Luciferians refer to that as the third eye and believe we communicate spiritually um, with spiritual beings and so forth and all sorts of stuff with that third eye. Now this is just an interesting photo. This is a death of a star and you notice the eye. It looks like it's looking out. All right, Rockefellers, the elitist Nephilim bloodline, Illuminati, Freemason, Luciferian. You can read about that right here and there's some more information about that lucifer the light bearer um, statue that i showed you at rockefeller center very interesting um, information there and you can see an ice arena by something that looks hellish so please go check out this information check out the post and i have some more for you um, there's lots of interesting stuff there. I don't have time to share all that with you, nor would you want to sit here and listen to me just share the whole article with you and you can go look at it. So let's look at a few more things. Now, here is just a few more interesting points. Okay, I have to, it has to do with the Vatican. Okay, but first I have to share this information with you so that it will make sense to you. Okay, in 1960, UNESCO, which is a part of the United Nations, put out an international call to save several ancient Egyptian temples that were going to be flooded by the construction of the Aswan High Dam, including the temple of Dendur, Dabad, Taffa, and Elisila, however you pronounce that, it's E-L-L-E-S-Y-L-A, Asila. The United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, is a specialized agency of the United Nations. Now, the author of this article writes, In my Washington, D.C. and New York City episodes, I reveal many Masonic connections to the United Nations, not least of which is the U.N. flag. Now, most of us who follow this stuff already know that the United Nations are your New World Order globalist, elitist, who are also a huge, huge part of everything evil that is going on in the world. 
In fact, I was led to UN headquarters in New York City by following the linear structure in the Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis Reservoir in Central Park, first to the Temple of Dender in the Met, which was given to the United States, and then directly to the Security Council Chamber of the UN, where I found a phoenix among the provocative Egyptian symbols. Now, if you've never read it, check out Randy Demain's books. He has two books, one called The Nephilim Agenda, that is part one. Part two is The Nephilim Resurgence. It goes into detail about all of this, including the bloodlines, the presidential bloodlines, and Barack Obama is actually related to that presidential bloodline, the Bush bloodline. So you'll have to go check it out, okay? Anyways, in my Paris part two episode, I discovered a solar alignment, winter solstice sunset in this case, that leads to the tip of the obelisk in place in place Fontenoy in front of UNESCO headquarters. And you can see the graph here or the picture here, sorry, um, with the lines drawn. Okay, UNESCO, the obelisk at um, place Fontenoy and so forth. The Aswan High Dam was completed on 21 or July 21st of 1970, one year before to the day of July 21st, 1969 was the day the Apollo 11 astronauts um, supposedly walked the moon. Okay, the Temple of Debad, Debad was given to Spain in 1968. And right here you can see a photograph of it. Now here's where we get into the Vatican. He writes that he discovered the orientation of the Temple of Debad is such that it points directly to the Vatican obelisk, the line bisecting St. Peter's Basilica and going right over the West Wind Rose Marker in St. Peter's Square. You can see right there. Okay, this evening I made... Now he writes here that he made two important discoveries of which he feels he should have spotted sooner and he doesn't think that anyone else has ever made these connections and publish them. Now here's the Temple of Taffa, and I do not know how to pronounce this upcoming word. I will do my best, but it was given to the Netherlands in 1971. It's located inside the um, Rieks Museum van Oudheden, okay, the National Museum of Antiquities in Leiden. Okay, like I often do, I fired up Google Earth looking for geometric clues. Okay, Vatican obelisk, Temple of Taffa. The line from the Temple of Taffa to the Vatican Obelisk goes right over the North Northwest Wind Rose Marker in St. Peter's Square. Amazingly, it also lines up perfectly with the orientation of the Apostolic Palace, which is the Pope's official residence. Okay, you can see a photograph here. The Papal Palace is arranged around the courtyard of Sixtus V, a name you'll recognize if you watched my Rome Part 1 video or read my snowflake and the flower post. You can see a picture here. Wind rose markers are the 16 elliptical plaques embedded in the ring surrounding the ancient Egyptian obelisk at the center of Vatican Square. See a photograph there. You can see how the line from the Temple of Tefa passes over the Nord Nordwest wind rose marker. Okay, see? Okay, and there's the Nord Nordwest marker. If you read Dan Brown's Angels and Demons, blah, 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 and I ended that, so never mind that. Um, let's see. The Temple of Elysia was given to Italy. It is located within the Museo Egizio, English Egyptian Museum in Turin. Okay, now it says um, that the Museo Egizio houses the world's largest and most comprehensive collection of Egyptian antiquities outside the Egyptian Museum in Cairo. In 2006, it received 554,911 visitors. Okay, he writes, too bad there weren't 89 more visitors or that would have made it an even 555,000 like the Washington Monuments or the Millennium Towers 555 Heights, for example. Perhaps there were 89 employees, but the resonance with 9-11 and 554-911 is also interesting. 555,000 visitors in or to the Museo Egizio reminds me of the world's most popular museum, the Louvre, having 555,000 square feet of public exhibition space. Do you think there is any chance the books have been cooked on these numbers or 
is the universe coordinating everything to fit the numbers. Either way, it's pretty amazing. The line coming from the Temple of Elysia passes right over the Northwest Windrose marker. In summary, you can see the lines coming from the temples of Dabad, Elysia, and Taffa passing over Windrose markers. You see right there. The Temple of Dander, Dender in New York City does not go over a Windrose marker, however. It is tied instead to the United Nations, Washington, D.C., and Stonehenge, as I describe in my videos. It says, as I've mentioned before, a line passing through the East Wind Rose marker goes directly to the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. So what does this all mean? Well, the Vatican has clearly linked itself with a series of ancient temples through the art of geomancy. Okay, you can see right here the Vatican. Okay, and then there's the Temple of Taffa. There's the Temple of Elysia and the Temple of Dabad. Okay, the Vatican, the United Nations, UNESCO, and the Freemasons are all implicated in a massive conspiracy that evidently holds ancient Egyptian temples in the highest esteem. It was no accident that these Egyptian temples were moved exactly where they are to encode the lines passing through the Windrose markers converging on the obelisk from Heliopolis at the heart of the Vatican. So no mistake there. Understanding all this, I'll take it one step further and speculate. Are the Egyptian gods real? Well, I believe they were. They were the Nephilim bloodline. They were demonic entities, fallen angels. Is the Pope secretly working for these gods or these demonic entities? I believe so. Especially with you see what's going on today with the Pope we have now. Um, most definitely. Are these gods really the extraterrestrial Anuki? Now, people who don't know about this stuff, especially people who are not Christian, and I w I'm not sure, but I would assume this particular author is not a Christian, based on what he's saying here. Um, they were Nephilim, you know, fallen angels, children of the fallen angels and the human women. But the higher-ups would be the actual fallen angels. Okay, so they wouldn't be extraterrestrial in Anunnaki, okay, or Anunnaki. They would be the Nephilim and the fallen angels. Okay, so, you know, there's many questions there surrounding that. Evil is definitely alive in this world. It has gotten worse over the past few years. Uh, we are in the end times. Evil is going to become worse, and we're going to see the um, the Antichrist or the man who's going to be the Antichrist is going to move forward. They are preparing for this. We're going to see um, all these things that are going to take place are going to take place very soon. We're going to see some major events. Now, whether you are pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or post-tribulation, either way, your pre-tribulation prophecy ministers are saying that we're going to go through the birth pangs. Okay, so it doesn't matter what tribulation theory you are, stuff is going to happen and you need to be prepared. Please take a look at my article so you can see the rest of the details I've not shared with you. Read and look at the pictures. I will leave the link, as I mentioned, in the about section below my video. I will also post the link to this article in the comments area below the video on my YouTube channel. Please visit mine and Lisa Haven's website, vineoflifenews.com. That's www.vineoflifenews.com. Thank you very much. If you're not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, please subscribe today and share these awesome videos. God bless you.